Hey folks, Joseph Mr. Bora here. Well, this is a big surprise because last night I just found out that one of my cousins got married. Yep, Amanda Destiny and Anthony have both got married on their wedding day. And we had a fun time uh, with the family. So everyone was all invited and we soon went straight to the ceremony at a local church. Yeah, I had to take pictures, I had to film and do other stuff. And afterwards, we went to the party to celebrate, gave some speeches, and started dancing, and had some wonderful food together. Wow. Such an awesome day last night. On the side of the fact that we had an earthquake happening in California on the 4th of July weekend. Yeah, even though I was watching Stranger Things <laughs> season 3. Yeah. On Netflix, and that was just... Well, at least Stranger Things turned out to be amazing that season, so... Already seeing the first two seasons, which I now own on Blu-ray and DVD. Yeah, fans are well, anyway, as a tribute to uh, Amanda and Anthony's um, wedding that they had, that they're now simply together as a couple, I decided to review a wedding special from Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and the rest of the Peanuts game, simply called Snoopy's Getting Married, Charlie Brown. Yet, this is where Snoopy, Charlie Brown's dog, had just met, after all this time, his love interest, a lovely, beautiful poodle, and after being so smitten that he decided to get married. And he wants to invite everyone to join in, including his best beagle, Spike. Snoopy's brother. Now this is really interesting too because this beautiful poodle didn't actually have a name. In the comic strips uh, he was known simply as the Beach Beagle because I think Snoopy actually met her at the beach. But the first time we got to see her televised was on Life as a Circus, Charlie Brown. I haven't reviewed that one yet, but someday I will. Which was known simply as Fifi. And this is what when Snoopy uh, suddenly joined the circus, he got to meet this beautiful poodle. And this is where he became the life of the town the life of the circus, you know, especially training with uh, Fifi. But in this special, she was referred to as Jean Vier. Yeah, it's a French name. Quite honestly, though, I think it would have been named Fifi, though. Because yeah. Fifi is a better name. And it was also used in the Peanuts movie as well, even though the poodle looks exactly like a beagle. <laughs> yeah, and it was voiced by Kristen Chenoweth. <laughs> yes. Anyway, now the first time I saw the special, believe it or not, this was actually my first Peanuts VHS tape that I ever owned, along with the other VHS tapes I got. So, and I started watching this many times. This was back in 1992 when suddenly I became a huge fan of Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and the rest of the Peanuts game. And that's why I said to myself, I gotta start collecting all the VHS specials and movies that they have. And I, I just I just got nuts over Peanuts. Yeah. And that's how I became a fan. 
So I got this at Thrifty, yeah, before it became Rite Aid in 1997. And I was like, wow. I started reading the comic strips and when we started renting them at the library and then I started getting all the books and everything here. So if it wasn't for this special that I saw, think of it this way. I would have never been a Peanuts fan at this point. Although, technically speaking, I did watch the Christmas special long before I watched Snoopy's Getting Married. And that was in the late 80s. And I did see all the MetLife commercials because they play it all the time on network television. So, so even I already knew about um, the rest. And, and so is um, Knott's Very Farm commercials. So. And even then, I already knew uh, that that my mom was also a big fan of it as well. Yeah, because she was the one that had the astronaut Snoopy. And she started collecting some of that, too. So technically speaking, it was my mom that got me into Peanuts. Because she was the one that gave me the VHS tape that she got at Thrifty. <laughs> yeah. So... Think about that. But hey, I'm just happy that I became a fan and always will be for the rest of my life. So I'm gone. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but let's um, review the special. It stars Brad Johnson as Charlie Brown, Stacy Ferguson, aka Fergie as Sally Brown. She also did the voice of Violet as well. And I'm a bit surprised that she didn't use her singing voice talent uh, for the vocals that's, just, that's in the special. It turns out to be Don D. Larry for Sally Brown to sing. So, Yeah, I would have loved to hear uh, Fergie sing in this version, but I guess, you know, even when she was doing Kids Incorporated, that's probably what she had to do. Okay. Anyway, uh, Jeannie Holtzman as Peppermint Patty, Curry Holigan as Marcy, Heather Stoneman as Lucy Van Pelt, Jeremy Schoenberg as L Linus Van Pelt, Danny Colbury as Schroeder, Hal Steven as Pigpen and Franklin, and Bill Melendez as Snoopy, Spike, and Woodstock, as well as Woodstock's friends and all the rest of the birds. <laughs> okay. It's created and written by Charles M. Schultz and it's directed by Bill Melendez. The special begins when Charlie Brown receives a call from Peppermint Patty and decided to invite Snoopy to guard her house because her dad's out of town and she's afraid that having to stay alone will make things worse because she was afraid that she's going to get robbed at her house. So that way, when Snoopy uh, guards her house, Charlie Brown decided to bring him a weapon to protect himself and that happens to be a hockey stick. <laughs> So, once uh, he came over, he decided to um, mind his own business by sewing and just making sure that under uh, Pepper Patty's protection that he'll be able to stop uh, the robber. But at that point on, he started hearing some eerie sounds. He even spotted uh, an owl uh, passing by. And then he went straight into the bush where he began to spot two large eyes peeking in. And he screamed as loud as he can and ran off. So Pepper Patty just found out that he ran away as fast as he can and decided to call Charlie Brown to take his place as a watchdog. Now this is kind of silly because he's only human. So why couldn't Pepper and Patty just uh, give him some real food and try to 
have him stand in like like he's a guard. Okay, I mean, yeah, Pepper Patty's not that smart. Anyway, because that's when he decided to give uh, uh, Charlie Brown the collar, and just when he was so hungry, because you know he was so tired too, and he just got up, receiving a call from her. <laughs> Pepper and Patty just gave uh, Charlie Brown a bone. Yeah, a dog bone. I mean, come on. Give him some real food for crying out loud. So he had to sit on the porch and started howling like a dog. And this is where he shouts, One o'clock and all is well. Actually, all is not well. What am I doing out here? At one o'clock in the morning, I'm not a watchdog. What am I doing here? What happened to the real watchdog? What is the purpose of life? And Pepper and Patty said while she was asleep, Knock it off, Chuck. I need my beauty sleep. Soon afterwards, Snoopy returns and revealed that these eyes in the bushes actually belonged to a beautiful dog, a poodle, named Jean Vieve. That turns out to be Snoopy's love interest and becomes her fiance. Even though he written this letter for his brother Spike, which he lives all the way in Needles, California, which is a desert, he actually has his own cactus house to live by. And this is where he's going to receive the letter. So Snoopy announced that he's going to get married to Jean Vieve, which comes to a great shock for Charlie Brown, as well as Linus, Sally, Woodstock, and all the rest of the entire game and friends. So that's when Snoopy wants Spike to be his best beagle, you know, best man, at his wedding. But resulting to him was to travel all the way from his hometown, Needles, to Charlie Brown's hometown, at his house. But he needed the money to get there through the bus fare. He decided to enter a dog race in order for him to win a prize. So he was doing his best to be able to make it, actually grabbing the rabbit. But he will soon be disqualified because he's not a greyhound. You know, he's an ordinary beagle. Spike decided to find another job to work at, so hoping he'll be able to earn more money to be on his way. And he did, even though it was so dangerous that he had to, and so hard that he had to put up with. So, apparently, he did took money for the bus fare, but he decided that since that's not working out, he decided to go travel, started running around, you know, through the rain, everywhere, for a sunny day, you know, at the desert, and then he decided to take a train, hoping that this will make it through there, but he wants up at a garbage truck, when he finally made it to Charlie Brown's house, you know, where Snoopy is. <laughs> Well, of course, Lucy came along and tried to find out why both Charlie Brown and Snoopy are nervous. Linus is uh, preparing, along with the rest of the gang, for the wedding that they're going to serve straight at Charlie Brown's house through the fields. So, that's where we got Linus um, begin to uh, become his, uh, sort of his uh, reverend, right there. And you know, trying to give some speech and be able to, be able to join in with the bride and groom. While Lucy is making the salads along with Pepper and Patty and Marcy to, to bring in the wedding cake and all the rest of the food around to serve you know, for the main course. And all the girls and boys just joining in, hoping for for the best wedding that they're going to ever have. So meanwhile, Charlie Brown decided to take Snoopy shopping and just to find a tuxedo for him, along with Charlie Brown and Spike 
and all the rest so they'll be able to look formal and and casual which is very funny too because <laughs> when he went inside to grab the uh, tuxedo at first uh, uh, the owner decided to give him the suit for him but it was too big and then he gave um, a woman's suit that doesn't work for him yeah also all of them with uh, big top hats until at the end <laughs> because this place serves costumes he actually gave him a gorilla suit with a top hat <laughs> causes Charlie Brown to be totally frightened so this is where you know he got so mad that Snoopy demanded him to give him the right suit so he did so he got the um, the right suit, yeah, the right t-shirt with the tie, the black jacket, and the top hat to go with the cane, and there you go. The perfect suit for him for his wedding. And they all got the clothes, and they also had to have Snoopy hired um, all of Woodstock's friends to actually paint his entire doghouse, well, the inside of his doghouse, which we got to go inside to paint everything pink and white so it'd be beautiful for both uh, Snoopy and Jean Vieve. Now this was going to be a tough one for Snoopy because at first he was very excited but he soon grew completely nervous at the prospect of marriage not to mention he was he sleeps all the time he's so tired that he didn't even want to get up uh, for his bachelor party. So that's how he felt very miserable. You could see a tear coming directly from his eye just when Charlie Brown was about to bring Snoopy inside uh, his house. Yeah, because with the boys, you know, Schroeder, Linus, uh, Franklin, uh, Pick Pan, and, and all the rest. <laughs> so this was going to be Snoopy's bachelor party. They were actually having some root beer, and show <laughs> and Schroeder was about to bring um, his mother slipper, so that way, you know the the groom is going to drink uh, <laughs> some root beer straight out of the slipper, yeah, because you know how they do it. Meanwhile, uh, the girls, uh, which is you know Pepper, Patty, Marcy, Sally, Lucy, all the rest where they're about to play a game where where John Vier decided to hold all the dog bones, yeah, having old, new, borrowed and blue. <laughs> yeah. So now when we're finally getting ready for the wedding on this particular wedding day, yeah, Snoopy was already feeling very nervous already as it is. He was tired, he he's still sleeping. Yeah, Charlie Brown was about to wake him up, just give him some breakfast, hoping that this will be the big day for him, but he said he, he just can't go through with it. He feels like everything was too much, he felt too young for this, but Charlie Brown decided to force him out of his doghouse to get ready, you know, wear your, your entire tuxedo along with uh, Spike, as well as Charlie Brown getting ready, so now they're going to finally have the best day of their lives. So right at the ceremony, just when everything was getting all set up, that's where we hear Sally um, singing the the verse for for Snoopy and Jean Vieve. However, this is where we begin to find out that the bride was late. So everyone began to get completely anxious about this. So Charlie Brown gets upset, tells Spike to find out what's going on. But soon afterwards, Lucy came and started to give the good news and the bad news. Which the good news was that they had a great wedding party already. So everything was all set up, everything was going perfect. But then the bad news was that the bride-to-be had just ran off with the Gordon Retriever. Yeah. Because we learned that this poodle is a cheater. 
So whatever he sees, uh, so wh whatever she sees, whatever dog that she wants to be with, it turns out to be someone else. Yeah. Just your typical uh, dog that just loves to cheat. So the wedding was off. Everyone else was like saying about, what about this, what about that, and it was a big shock. So now Snoopy just couldn't believe it that she ran off. So now he decided to take the salad and the wedding cake and decided to just eat on his own with Woodstock, and that's what he did. So it feels like, you know, he just lightened up as the remaining of a bachelor and just... Well, I guess this is the best he could do. So then Spike returns home to his residence, you know, just suddenly going back to his house, the giant cat the city lives in, and decided to enjoy himself with, with half of the wedding cake that he saved inside the bag. So, so yeah, it wasn't the perfect ending for it, but in the end, well... That's life. <laughs> okay. But it, it's a very good special. Um, I really loved it. I mean, at least we get to see what Snoopy's been going through, even though he really loves the girl of his dreams. But in the end, you know, he, he becomes completely nervous about this, hoping what the wedding's going to turn out. I mean, who knows what's going to happen next. And, well, it was going to happen anyway. Um, now, I, I know um, throughout all the letters that he had to written by Spike, which Charlie Brown had to read all of them, and this is where he became shocked about this because he was afraid what was going to happen. You know, I mean, are, is Snoopy and Jean Vier going to move away or are they going to start living together inside his doghouse? Well, that's the whole decision they have to go for. Now, I, I find it really interesting, too, to see... Um, all the flashbacks, you know, when he was writing the letter to Spike, was we see uh, Snoopy and Jean Vier, you know, going around on a boat ride, and then they went to see a movie, which turned out to be Citizen Kane. Yes, which is regarded as to others, including film buffs, that it's the greatest movie ever made. And yes, even Jean Vier thinks so too. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, I, I know this was 1985, but. Even by then, Citizen King was already playing on TV and also <laughs> on home video, too. So it's almost like if Citizen King had a re-release or something. Yeah. But they did have a re-release in 1991. Uh, for its, uh, I believe it's uh, 50th anniversary at the time. Yeah. And I, I love Citizen Kane, too. I mean, granted, I mean, it's a statement for, for others to say it's the greatest movie of, of all time. And I know that there are people who say it's overrated, but I just think it's a good movie for for all its levels. There's there's several issues with the film, too, but whatever. It's, it's my opinion. But I, I love the movie, too. Okay, well, let, let's get back to this review. Um... <laughs> anyway, this was, um, out of all these years, it was always great to see Spike, you know, Snoopy's uh, brother in the special, even though the first time we did saw Spike, I would say it was on the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show, yeah, where, you know, where we get to see Spike visiting from Needles, California, and, and this is where uh, Lucy wanted to train the Spike because... You know, he was completely skinny, so he wants to have him gain more weight, enough to attack the cat next door, remember? But, Spike got so scared that he lost all that weight. <laughs> so, okay. Um, now, I find it interesting because in the strips, we found out that Jean Vier was never seen, but we did learn that she ran off with Spike, and then later a coyote instead of a golden retriever so we learned that yeah she was a cheater right yeah hard to believe 
Uh, also to note that yes, this was nominated for an Emmy Award, but never won. Well, hey, you know, they had won some Emmys, or sometimes they were never nominated, or they can be nominated. So, a lot of funny moments here and there. Um, I love the singing voice of Sally, you know, just for Snoopy and jean -Vier. I mean, I wish it was sung by Fergie, but that's the best they could do. Um, a lot of nice moments here and there, and and even ones I already mentioned already, so. Also to note that this was the 28th primetime special. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of this review. And the composer, Judy Munson, uh, created some beats for this special. It really worked. I mean, from the beginning to the middle, all the way to the end. Uh, I, I love that piano sound tune that they use. It just fits so well. Like do 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 Yeah, that that's beat. It's 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 a fun special. I I loved it, and at least you know Snoopy did have a chance, but sadly blew it. But in the end, he's there, along with the rest of the game, so he's still with them. So I guess what matters the most is that even if he could, didn't get married, well, he still has his friends. And everything's going great. So, I guess that's the whole uh, history here about uh, Snoopy's getting married, Charlie Brown. So, so that's a special, and I give it five stars. I mean, it's hysterical, but it's worth it. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.